All right, everybody. Welcome back to Mr. Dunn's Ceramic Art Room. Today, we are going to make sculptures. Let's get started. <laughs> We have two sculpture projects that I teach in here, and the first one is the small sculpture, which is kind of fun because it's small and it would seem simple, but it may not be that simple for you. Uh, we have all kinds I can show you here that we've done all the time. I'm going to get up close. This is a cat that I did. He's got his tail there. So the trick here is that it has to be solid, solid clay. Let me throw them over here. Here's the dog. He's got a one spot there. Tail like that's a little stronger than sticking out or anything, they break off easy. Anything that sticks out is a little dangerous. He's got his tongue, his eyes, black nose. I got another dog here. He did. I can rip those out really fast. Okay, <laughs> that's quite a tail. Ears pinched for white and brown. Right? Um, and then even another dog. Then I start saying, can I make him walking? These legs together, these legs apart. A little yellow dog. That's a lot of dogs. All right. I said, I gotta do something else this year, so then next year I made a bear. I had to look at one, see how that slopes, you know, a little tail. He's walking along. Right? All one piece of clay. I didn't connect anything together. But you can. But it just makes it not as strong. Um, okay, then someone said make a sheep, so I tried to make a sheep. <laughs> so this is about using the score tool, and I made it all rough. Fired it uh, white. Little tail again. Little sheep. Um, then one year, I said, okay, we got to get more complicated. The students were getting better than me, so I had to uh, make, try to make an elephant, right? He's got a little tail. Notice the tail's connected. When, it, when it's connected, it uh, doesn't break as easy. You can hit it, it doesn't break. But if it's sticking out, you can break that right off, right? These ears are big enough, that's so pretty strong, right? So a little elephant, he's cute. Um, yeah, I think then, then I made the cat more recently because I made a chess piece whole set with some other animals for my daughter. Uh, a weird looking owl. Ooh. I think it's blurry if I get too close, right? All right, so little owl. Um, multiple parts, sure. So this is a solid frog, right? So I hooked the legs on. I made the body first in a teardrop shape, made the eyes. Then I made these legs, long rolled coil, and, and cut them out and squished them for the legs. And made the little ones in front. So you got a little green frog there. Robert. Um, other things we've had actually this is a different project it's a large sculpture you can do it but anytime it's too big then it's the large sculpture that's the next one it's going to be hollow inside because it's so big right bigger than your thumb boom explodes so little seal here it's kind of fun this was actually a whistle you blow in here and it would whistle here but they didn't do the whole right we do those next semester um, so here's a it's a little bigger, but it's got enough, this is pretty thick right here, but enough air around it, it's gonna dry, and it survived. The tail going up there. So, little, uh, I guess, dolphin. Finally, uh, if you wanna do anything that's standing up, a character, a superhero, I would suggest you cut from a slab of clay out your shape, and then you reform it, so it's kind of all one piece, and then you can work on it and everything. Um, this is a little guy. What this is illustrating is that you need a base. You can't just make a character with his feet. He's going to fall over and break, and the arm's going to come off, and the head's going to go rolling. Um, yeah, you want to mount it to a piece and then build up. See, so if you're going to do part by part, you start down there, the legs, the body, and the arms, and all that. Remember, anything that sticks out is pretty fragile. But it can be done. You just got to be careful. Cool, so that's not anything fancy. Just to illustrate, it has to be standing up. That's all my examples, so let me just make one for you right here in my hand. Let's do this. All right, well, I'll go get some clay. You look at these cool student examples.
here we go. Everyone standing around here to watch me. Those are be my students. That's creepy. Okay, so we've got this chunk of clay. Everyone's going to get a chunk of clay. Um, and we want to turn it into a solid character without adding too many parts so it's strong. Although like the elephant we added the ears. Maybe I'll make another one of these. Or maybe I'll make another... Um, how about... How about we'll make a... I got a hippo. What do you call it? Rhinoceros or giraffe. A long neck. Can't do that in one piece. Giraffe. And those long skinny legs. So anything with long skinny legs like a deer, dainty little thing. It's very hard to do to make it look like it has skinny legs because they're so fragile and they break and it falls over. Um, that's why everything here is kind of thick legs, right? Bearish. Even the sheet looks ridiculous with this big thick legs, right? Or the it's connected in the front. Right? It's really nice it's sitting up, the cat. Um, elephant has big legs. Well, so does a, a rhinoceros. So, so we're gonna take this clay, it's probably too much. Um, and it's gonna be longer than we would think because we want the whole body and the head to be part of this one piece of clay. So I'm gonna go like this. Okay. And this whole piece is probably too big. But by the time we pull the legs down, we'll see. This will be a bigger one than any of these. Uh, I'm gonna take some more off. Let's try that. Alright, it's a pretty big thing here. Um, for illustration purposes, we'll make it big. So I'm going to right from the get-go, I'm going to take this, this front part and push it up. And that's going to go give me clay for the head. So I'm just going to allocate major body part areas. Around that, uh, let's see. Okay, so that'll be the head. One of the problems often is when it feeds, it goes boom, and it falls on its head, right? Because I have too much clay out here. But we're going to try to take care of that. And then, let me push this down like that. So this is head stuff. Hippo's got a big head. Hippo or a rhinoceros. Now for the legs, I'm going to split it down the middle here, try to be accurate, okay, all the way in there, all right, pull that apart. So now I have two sides to it, and I'm going to split this in half here. Sometimes I might cut out a whole section, a whole U there, so then I have the legs, but the hippo's got a lot of uh, fat legs, so I need all this material, okay. And it splits that way. So I've got a four-way split there. See that? So I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to bring it into my leg. See, it's, this is why we're using the gray clay. It's a little more elastic. A little more good for making sculptures. And it takes on new forms. and doesn't dry as fast. I think it has less sand in it. There's a fly. Can you believe that? Deep in the school here. A window to be found. All right, so now right away, in just seconds, I've got four legs, a body, and this big head. We can always take off. It's just harder to add back on. All right, so now we've got to make it look like our animal. Now, this one's weird enough, and I'm not familiar with it. I've never done it before. It might be a good time to go to your phone, to go to your phone and pull up um, a Google search of what that animal looks like. There we go. Boom. All right, so I got this rhino there. Oh, look at that. He's big, head down, which is kind of cool, which is actually cool. tells me about how they stand and how they walk. Gotcha. All right. So already I feel like the body is too small, and the legs are too big. <laughs> but, you know, we got to keep the legs strong. And I might take a little bit off these legs. It's gonna go up like this and put this clay. Let me get this bottom because now I'm folding clay on top itself, so I want it to stick well down for the body. Let's take a little bit of this material. Start with big proportions first. And if we thin these legs out for length, that's gonna make them smaller too. See, they're getting longer. And now the body's feeling bigger. All right? Let's make a belly hanging down. That clay I pulled down. Do a little bit 
the smearing, smoothing, because I did a lot of pulling on it and squishing it, so it got rough. I tend to like to do the body first and then do the head last. And this head is really, I keep touching that, come on. Oh, wow, his ears are way back here. The head drops down. And then we're going to need a lot of big, uh, what do you call it, horn on the front. Let's get that going. There's a secondary horn in the middle. Kind of allocate that. That's too far up because my hands are big, so I'm going to push it down. Okay. He's got these kind of big side of the face. I'm like a horse. This is going to go up. We work on this side. So the um, reference is really helpful. Okay. And this uh, chin line comes all the way up, up to the top up here. And we're going to have his ears that we'll work on way up on the top here. Looks like they spin around. I'm going to cup them forward like a dog. Alright, so we're getting the big areas done. Clean up the holes and the pinching things. Um, you can see there's a bump coming out for his nose, so I need to pull a little clay here down. There we go, so this goes back out a little bit. It's not flat off of there. That horn's pretty pointy. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Curves back. Got a long curve to it. This little one is really hard to. The eyes really are just below this big little horn, way down here. That is interesting. So let me see. Sometimes you can find a tool to make a good eye. Actually, that's backwards. Thought it stopped recording. So, it's actually, I can try it that way. I think they have it showing it this way. Yeah, I like that way better. See that? Little tool to make his eye that way. Which means I want to switch this one around. Get any smearing done first that you need to do. I'm going to go this way. No, oh, this way. Alright, yeah, his eyes are way down here by the horn. Ears are way up there. And this, like, chin line goes up, up behind the ears. Alright, then we'll have to smear this stuff. Big wrinkles we want to clean up. What I got to do with this, this chin? Does he have a, a mouth line on this picture? You can just spend the most time on the head usually. No, he's got some big round nose, you know, like you think of a horse, those big round noses. He's got those. I'm gonna, and they're kind of wrinkly and stuff, but I'm going to use a tool. Like a different tool. And, okay, I'm thinking of something like the back rounded end of this. It's nice and soft. I like can kind of point down like that. that. Alright. So we got this big head, which now when I look at the proportion of my head to my body, his body's bigger. Um, I think I'm going to be able to take some of this clay and get it up under here and let that stomach sag a little more. So 
So let's get a piece of that off of here. Flatten that out, lengthen it, shrink it, round it. So we can make a little dome here on this. It'll be his stomach hanging down. <laughs> All right. Pull that off. Remember, anytime you hook anything together, you're going to want to glaze um, <laughs> Anytime you hook anything together, you're going to want to score it. So that, this guy's tummy. Maybe try it first. Sometimes there might be an air pocket there. see here. Put that on like that. Look at that. So that is definitely going to give him what I think looks like shorter legs, but we're going to make that belly drop down like that. That's going to make him look a little heavier like that, a little bigger. See that tummy a little closer to the ground. We can uh, try to blend it off now. I don't want to connect it to the legs and lose the length of the leg, so I'm going to push down in there. Right, I'll have to work on the feet here in a minute. So you just go part by part, piece by piece, leg, body, head, back, tail end, and try to just dial it into what you think it should look like, what you see. It. There it is. Yeah, he's got some long cracks um, between his legs and his stomach that come up the backside here to find the leg up much higher. And this fold of skin. Alright. Do it on the other side as well. Push it in. Front legs, yeah, there's like flaps of skin. Reno's I mean, got big uh, armor skin. Alright, you see how I did the, the lines here in the front and the back of the legs? Yeah, that's what I was trying to do on both sides. And I also noticed I have, he's really quite round on the body. Mine is big on the belly and goes in and out again and does the top, so I almost feel like I need to add more clay here, make him more round. All right, but then he's getting so big, I'm worried about the hollow needs to be hollow. I might have to carve some out of the, the stomach or puncture a little hole in it somewhere. Um, he's got a top of his head, more of a ridge that comes across to his shoulder. So I'm going to pinch this clay together here. This is like straight across, like a horse's mane, a big muscle that holds the head up. So I'll bring that back. And smear it on. Let's go on here. Smoothing it out. Sometimes you want to dip your finger in a little water and rub it around. You don't want to get too slimy. Just don't want the thing to crack. And then you can't move the clay because your hand just slides on it. Something like this. We have brown clay everywhere. We were using brown clay. Big neck going back. Of course, his head is down below his body. So my head's in the right place, but his body comes up this big. <laughs> I need to make the legs a lot longer. We can't do that though. Alright, another interesting thing, he's got folds in the skin up here. So just like I made these lines here, I'm going to make a line underneath here. I pull some the legs up. And make like this fold here. The skin. Me. 
kind of hooks into that one. Let's deal with the feet now. Okay, so the feet are the bottom of the feet. I wouldn't worry too much about the length of it unless they have some strong accents on there like a horse might. Um, make them a little longer here. Have more like an elephant's foot. Have that big round pad with these big um, nails that come down. So what I do is I push it down like this and I pull back and it gives a little pad out that sticks out the front. There. There we go. So it creates, I don't know if you can see that, this little lip that comes out for their feet, in the front of their foot. So it's not just a round like some of these, this guy's just around coming down to the ground. And then the bear, I tried to make a foot sticking out, right? You can't let it be too big, it look funny, but just a little bit there. Then we can do the back ones, the same thing. All his feet look the same. Wow, that shuts off fast. All right, I'm done with the foam. Got enough here to work with. Let's pull it back up a little bit longer. Get him off the ground more. Okay, and then we're going to do the back feet. Now, do I want the feet just four square? Do I want them like he's walking, like this dog is together and apart? Maybe this one's even more together and apart. Uh, or just very still and strong and standing straight. I kind of like that. Um, just so he looks big and strong. He's leaning to the right, so that means this leg's a little short. <laughs> there we go. We have one leg out in front. Keep him from falling forward. This one back a little bit. Um, maybe like that, like that. There we go. Um, I do want to see his back in here. There it is. Uh, yeah. It's got these, these lines that come up here. Have. And he's got a little tail. That's fun. So at least I got some extra clay here to, to pull up and kind of go down. I'm going to have it wrap along the side of the body so it won't break. But you can see it. Let's get the curve I want on the, the back side. And then we're going to go this go that way with it. Push it down, curve it to the side. They swat flies with that thing, I think. It's getting pretty dry. There we go. Get some water underneath it so it can stick to it. That would just make a nice little curve. It's fun, a little bit sticks out so it can uh, have a more real effect there. There we go, so his tail connected to his body. Hopefully it won't break. And I never connected it on, I just pulled it out. Right. I think that just makes it all stronger. All right, let's uh, get his tummy there, fix some of these cracks from stretching out the legs so much. All right. I would like to put some bumps on the feet, like an elephant has nails there, and they have the same thing. Um, maybe it's best to set it down and do it. It's just these like little arcs. Little rainbows. Alright. Then you might go like this with the brush, clean it all up. Soften up some of the problems. Alright. In the end, it is what it is. Head is too big for my body. <laughs> so it's a little runt.
If you can't uh, reach there with a, tool, a hand, then you can use a tool. My finger's too big, I'll mess that up. I've tried many times. All right, and I think they've got this big lip that overhangs their mouth, which chomps in underneath. So if you want, you can put in a, a line for that. If anyone picks it up, they'll see it. Oh, there's a crack there. There we go. Comes across. Up this side. I'm going to dig it out a little bit because the glaze will just cover that crack. There we go. Alright. Boo. The baby rhino. We'll call it a baby rhino because the proportions aren't perfect. <laughs> Those little tummy. That's it. Good luck. Go for it. Okay, folks, that's it for the small sculpture project. Hope you enjoyed that. Give it your best shot. Remember some simpler animals and harder ones and see me about getting help if you need it. And enjoy. Laters.